point out the facts of the people uh, to other members of the five million Americans who are suffering from pre-AS. So uh, I will start by saying that I've summarized yesterday that uh, we consider in our work over the last 30 years that ankylosing spondylitis is occurs predominantly in this 8% of the population who carry HLA-B, uh, ankylosing spondylitis. What you have is a proteus urinary tract infection, and that is your trigger factor. In case of ankylosing spondylitis, it will be Klebsiella in the large bowel. Autoantibodies will be produced to the sequences that cross-react with tissue. Uh, in case of proteus, there is proteus urease, which cross-reacts with hyaline cartilage, and another molecule, proteus hemolysin, which cross-reacts with HLA-DR1-DR4. And if you remember, 90% of rheumatoid arthritis patients in the United States belong to the DR1-DR4 genetic group, whilst the frequency in the general population is about 35% kind agent, uh, are, will be interfering with the production, uh, with the inflammatory <coughs> process. So it will be dampening down inflammation, and therefore you will feel better if you use these drugs. But you have not eliminated the original triggeration. Sure, the cause is still the... The, the cause the, is still there. The if you use cyclophosphamide, you're reducing the production of antibodies because you're interfering with cell division. If you use methotrexate, you're interfering with the production of antibodies. So all of these drugs are useful, uh, but they're not using the uh, treating the original trigger of agents. Well, so if we use the whole lot together, I'm saying you can achieve a better therapeutic sure. result. Sure. Oh, a multi, a multi, a, a multi, a multi drug approach, sure. a multi, including diet and yeah. exercise, and in the process you will reduce the dose of drugs required, therefore you will have less exposure to the deleterious side effects of a drug therapy. My question is, uh, if the inflammatory process doesn't begin, if, it, if, it's, if it's hijacked by a TNF alpha suppressor, yes. then does that mean that cell death is not occurring? No, cell death is still occurring, but the rate of inflammation is decreased because okay. the, the function of the tumor necrosis factor as the, as the term states, tumor necrosis. I'm sorry. Um, he wanted one of the purchase book, and I, I have two books to give back to you. A cytokine yes. that breaks down fragments of dead tissue into component amino acids. In other words, it's, it's used to, uh, to, like C-reactive protein is a marker of inflammation, but its main function is to uh, bind to choline residues present on which are breakdown products of cell membranes and they then take into the liver, the liver and get back to the general metabolic pathway. Mm -hmm. So inflammation is a body's response to tissue injury and always occurs See, if you have cell death. One of the, one of the concerns I have is, is I, I've gotten emails from people who have things like ankylosis spondylitis for many years and now I have IgA amyloidosis. Yes. And what I'm thinking is that there's a, a group of cells that are that are are, are dead, yes. but they're maybe still there. Um, that's a bad thing, and it, it might prevent osmosis, the osmotic process. For you. Well, amyloidosis will occur when you have high levels of antibodies for long periods of time. They accumulate, form clumps, and form amyloid, and they usually block and go. They usually get stuck in the kidney, so you end up with amyloidosis that's right. in the it's kidney, listed. and you then get renal failure. And we, we should always try to avoid uh, AS patients getting to the level of amyloid dose, doses. And one way of achieving is to reduce the production of these antibodies. And, but the thing is, uh, uh, TNF alpha suppressor does not decrease the numbers of, of, of uh, immunoglobulin. No, it doesn't. So, so but some, that's, a, that's another risk. Methotrexate does, you see. Okay. And so if you use an immunos if you use a cancer drug, and cancer drugs are usually, anti-cancer drugs, are drugs that interfere with cell division. Okay. And they interfere with all cell division, so skin, kidneys, and so on. They also interfere with the, uh, the limb, uh, immune cells, the plasma cells, and the B lymphocytes that produce antibodies. So if you use a, an immuno a cytotoxic, uh, cytostatic agent, uh, a, a, a cancer drug that interferes with cell division, and remember cancer drugs, you want to stop cell yes. division of cancer cells, then this has a, a use. So, of course. Because it's not an all or none situation. Uh, 
uh, immunology obeys the law of mass action of chemistry. The more of the antigens, the more will you have antibodies sure. and so on. And all of you are aware of this in hay fever time. In springtime, when there is a lot of pollen around, sometimes up to 50% of the population will get hay fever as a result of the increased quantities of pollen. Well, that's the same applies to immunology in ankylosing spondylitis. The more starch you have, the more claims you have, therefore the more symptoms. And uh, you can get away with small amounts and something you've got to find out for yourself. But it isn't that you have one spaghetti and disaster will, will, will supervene. That's not true. It is not uh, uh, one molecule that is responsible. It is the continuous production of more Klebsiella microbes by feeding substrate to it into the colon. As we, as we mentioned with the Seventh-day Adventists who have a high starch diet and compared to American meat and veg eaters, they, the normal Americans meat and veg, veg eaters have much smaller quantities of Klebsiella in their feces compared to the Seventh-day Adventists. 